Hi there, my name is Chids, this is Miniature Mistakes, and this week I've been a dum-dum. And also I used an airbrush for the first time. So I've already tried to make this video once before, but for whatever reason all my footage ended up corrupted and I don't have any of it. All the models that I airbrushed are gone. I mean, I have the models and I've taken pictures of them and I will be showing those, but I don't actually have any of the footage of me going through the process. So I'm just going to talk about it. Before I get started though, I'd like to say that if you're also a beginner and you're just looking for a quick reference on how much to thin your paints and where to set your pressure on your compressor, this is not that video. However, if you are looking for a video that will explain the potential hurdles you might come across, then this video is probably worth watching. So the first problem that I encountered actually has nothing to do with airbrushing. It's fairly basic and simple and I didn't pay attention to it and that's why I'm just going to mention it in case someone else forgets about it. See, I live in a country where the wall sockets output 220 volts, but I didn't order the compressor from here, I ordered it from overseas. It came in from the US where the wall sockets are 110 volts. Now it didn't go as bad as you might expect. Thankfully I had a surge adapter that down converted the voltage anyway and didn't blow anything up. Nevertheless, the when I switched the air compressor on for the first time, it did start smoking and uh, it was way louder than it is at the correct voltage, which makes sense since the motor was, I guess, running overtime. As soon as I saw the smoke, I switched it off and I found my mistake almost immediately because there's a giant sticker on the compressor that says maximum output 110 volts. I ended up ordering a voltage converter online, it came in in a couple of days and the problem was fixed. Later that weekend, I also took it to an electronics shop to make sure that nothing was fried on the inside. So if you're ordering any electronic parts from overseas, just make sure you follow the basic rules. With that said, once everything was running smoothly, I started airbrushing. I started with some fairly large miniatures so that I could see the effect of the airbrushing on them more clearly. Having said that, airbrushing was far harder than I was imagining it to be. See when you're working with a brush, there's really not that much stuff to pay attention to. But when it came down to it, with airbrushing, there were quite a few things to pay attention to and some of them were interlinked with each other. By the end of this experience, what I came to realize is that airbrushing sort of has this triangle that you need to pay attention to. How far is the airbrush from your miniature? How thin are your paints? And finally, what's the pressure like on your air compressor itself? If you can find the balance between that triangle, then you're probably going to be successful at airbrushing. Minus a couple other things that were playing tricks on me initially. This balance between the three things in the triangle was really the hardest one to nail. But if you took them in any one direction too far, you would ruin the paint job. So in that sense, it was a very delicate balance that needed to be struck. The other few things that I was struggling with was, firstly, I, I found it really difficult to actually hit the miniature with my, with my airbrush. I felt like I kept missing and I didn't realize accuracy would be that big a problem. I figured if you have your airbrush and your miniature directly in front of each other, then sure, but this isn't very comfortable. Um, just from this angle, it was a little sometimes difficult to see where the paint was going. And that brings me to my second point. You don't necessarily always see if the paint is landing on the miniature. Because your paint is so thin and so evenly spread out, sometimes you don't realize until it's dried whether you've actually even hit the, the miniature with paint. That was kind of tricky and, and would mess with me a bit. Uh, and that was something that caused the, the, the third problem was I didn't always keep my airbrush moving or I wasn't using it in bursts. I would keep the airbrush in one spot till I saw some paint on it and that would end up with these like really patchy spots where some of the paint was really thick and then as I would move around the paint would get, you know, it was different thicknesses in different areas, which I can show you on this first bear that I had airbrushed. The airbrushing was fine on the sides, but in that in that center area where I started airbrushing, it was really thick because I couldn't see the paint initially. And that's when I realized, oh, I need to keep it moving. It was almost like uh, using a, a spray can for priming. You need to keep that, that can moving. You need to not have it sit in one spot for too long. And by too long, I mean even a full second or a second and a half or a couple of seconds. And the back over here, you can see that it got a little more patchy. This was also with slightly thicker paint. I don't really have exact ratios. I was just kind of eyeballing it, but this was roughly around the consistency of what I would use on a wet palette if I was just base coating a miniature. What this also did was cause some clogging issues on my airbrush itself. This paint was too thick for what it was and it needed to be thinned some more. After I went ahead and thinned the paint, I tried it on another miniature, which was this one. As you can see, this one fared a little bit better. The paint job overall is a lot more even. It's a lot more consistent across the board. I still miss some spots. Uh, this was where the, the 
the paint was kind of messing with me because with this particular shade, it was kind of difficult to see it until it had dried and I had applied a couple of layers. And so I wasn't sure if I was hitting the, the model with paint or if it was just too thin and couldn't be seen. I had no idea. But as you can see, after a couple of layers, it did give me a pretty nice and smooth effect, except for the parts where I missed the model, of course. And this is just lack of experience at this point. For the owl bear, the paint was a little bit thinner than it would be for a, a base coat if you were using a brush. And the compressor was set to maybe about two bar or 20 PSI roughly. For the next test, I decided to start playing around with the compressor a bit more. While I kept the paint consistency the same, I dropped the pressure to about one bar. And this is where the idea that distance from the miniature matters started to kick in. Because as you can see on this wolf, I started to miss spots on the tips of the, the, the fur especially, where the paint was, I, I just couldn't see it. It was too thin, I was keeping it too far away, I wasn't able to see where the spray was going, and it wasn't materializing on the miniature fast enough for me to really pay attention to that. So in my very limited experience, it would seem that there's some amount of instinct that plays into using an airbrush, knowing where the paint has hit, knowing how much has hit, and knowing that in a couple of layers it'll all be okay. This was the real challenge of airbrushing to me. So there you go. As far as experiences go, it was a tricky one. There were a lot of things that went wrong that I didn't expect to go wrong, and there were a lot more things to consider that I didn't expect to consider. Especially coming from just using a brush full time, the airbrush has a lot more going on and there's a lot more to pay attention to. But again, I feel like if I can nail that balance, that triangle, uh, that's kind of where the sweet spot will be and I'm definitely going to do some more experiments. If the idea of that kind of content interests you, I'd appreciate if you show that like button some love and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, until next time.